Welcome to another episode of The Artist Report. I'm Braden Flynn, and this is a recording from the September gathering of Connecting Things SoCal. Connecting Things is a once a month speaker series and hang out with tons of creators, makers, designers, artists, photographers, and business owners. We then have guest speakers who share insights into what they do and how they do it. This month's speaker was Noah Elias. He's an artist and entrepreneur working with clients such as Disney, Fox, Universal, MTV, and a bunch of other names you'd recognize. Noah talks about finding meaning and balance in both work and personal time. So because we're limited on time, I'm, first of all, thanks for having me here. I'm stoked. Uh, there's nothing more that I love than talking to creatives and entrepreneurs and visionaries. Um, let me ask you this. How many people here are under 30? Okay. Why are you laughing? <laughs> Yeah. How many people here are above or uh, between 30 and 40? Okay. Anybody over 40? Uh, those are my peeps. <laughs> All right. Um, that just kind of helps me understand uh, who we're talking to today and just kind of what this mesh is, is all about, about. It will be a drink off the fire hose in a very short amount of time. So I have to take about an hour and a half, a good hour, and condense it to about 20 minutes. Um, you can follow me here if you want to continue the conversation, and I'll kind of let you know uh, how we can connect after and find out more information about what I'm going to talk about this morning. There's going to be a few things I'm going to unpack this morning. One is going to be where I was and what happened to me, literally here in Costa Mesa, building my brand and building my business. Then I'm going to go into what I do now and why. Okay? And I think all I really want to do is just give you my 30-year playbook and say, here's how I failed, here's how I blew it. And here's why I'm doing what I'm doing now. And if I was able to intercept, one of my favorite parts of what I do now for a living is literally doing brand strategy with individuals and companies. My main forte is helping people find their hidden value in their life. They don't even know what they have. And I help them detect their blind spots. Okay? Those are my two favorite things to do with entrepreneurs and businesses. I've consulted with Disney. And I've also consulted with a person that's looking to start their life and find out what they're made to do and what they're called to do. So that's my favorite thing to talk about. <laughs> so <clears throat> I'm going to go through this really quick, um, and then we're going to get into some meat in the end. I'm going I'm to go over what I believe we all want to know, and that's how to, how to find the sweet spot so that you can create more time and get paid for your passions and impact the world. My favorite place to get any person or company is do the least amount, or do the, 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 uh, make the most money you can ever make while doing what it is you love the most in the least amount of time. I love to hack life. So if I was to say there's a hashtag to my, my life, it's hacking it. Hacking everything from my time so that I can build memories. I do not believe that we are here to be put on this earth just to make money and acquire things, to coast our way to death on a white sandy beach. I could think of nothing worse. I want to be in the, in the business of producing. I want to be running with those that produce. And I want to influence influencers. Okay? Does that make sense? So my story began here, and this is why it's so important for me, a bike in Corona Del Mar at 16 years old. At nine years old, my parents had a divorce. I, they split and took off. We had drugs and alcohol in our, business, in our life and in our, um, in our family upbringing. I had to basically go to work at 14, 15 years old. So I was a, there was no graphic design. There was no desktop publishing. There was nothing that, uh, good to see you, dude. There was nothing that had to do with social media. We, even, we just got pagers. Okay, so you need, to, <laughs> you need to think about the, the context of what I was living in. If I wanted to spread the word and let, get my brand out to the world, I had to take it door to door. So I got on a bike, I went down in the Corona Del Mar, my first sign still exists, it's Fast Eddie's Barbershop. And so the window on that barbershop still exists today, and I did that when I was in high school. And so I would go door to door to door to door, living with my mom, she was single, um, single mom, raising my uh, sister and I above Coco's in Corona Del Mar, and she was bedridden. On prescription drugs, I realized, listen, I'm not getting a free ride to Art Center. I'm not going to be able to go out and just learn how to do a business. I have to make it this happen right now. And so that's what I did. I got on a bike and I went door to door. I'm going to now take an hour talk and go beep <laughs> about this next chapter of my life. In my 20s, my 20s was about like painting the, the, uh, the pool for Robin Big. My life became, hey, call Noah. He's the guy that, and it was, he's the airbrush guy that'll do tattoos on pink for the music videos on MTV, Meet the Barkers on MTV, Robin Biggs Pool on MTV, and it just, like, I was the guy that would go fix and do really cool, big value stuff in a very short amount of time. Um, World War II maps in a movie for CBS, and I had to do that in like a day. So I was like the fix-it guy. 
So it was great to have an ability and to have a talent that was unique, that nobody else could do. And that was the one thing I learned at an early age was discover that one thing that you can do that nobody else can do. All right? And it doesn't have to do with just I have an ability, but it's you as a brand, as a product, as a person. People buy what, uh, they, they don't buy what you do, they buy why you do it. Simon Sinek said it in his book, Start With Why. And the idea that I'd love for you to come away with today is looking at my story, success, money, having money, not having money, having tragedies come into life that are major speed bumps that can really flip and knock you down and make you want to quit. But I would love nothing more to see you get to that sweet spot of waking up today, tomorrow, and every day after between today, having this meeting today, and every day after that going, I know who I am, I know what I'm supposed to do, I know exactly how I'm supposed to do it. As creatives and entrepreneurs, I think that is what haunts us every single day. Is today what I'm supposed to be doing? Is it how I'm supposed to be doing it? Am I doing it with who I know I need to be doing this with? Okay? We don't want to guess. We don't want to just throw spaghetti up against the wall seeing if things work. So my life was all about paint it once, wait for the next customer to walk in. Paint it once, wait for the next customer to walk in. So I would do large portraits. There used to be a place called Rock and Java right here where the hub is in Costa Mesa now. And I would sit up there on Friday and Saturday nights and I would paint while everybody had coffee. Starbucks didn't even exist. That's how old I am. Okay. <laughs> so I was painting Friday nights. Everybody was drinking coffee, smoking cigarettes, hanging out. And I thought, you know what? This is my way to hand out business cards and get in front of folks. The next thing I know is, hey, can you come paint this mural? Can you come to Nordstrom and paint the shoe campaign that we have? Can you come over here and help us um, you know, do this big installation for these sets for Lexus and Toyota? I literally had to get in front of people. There was no way to say, you know, my Costa Mesa where I lived in a warehouse up above um, since I graduated high school. I still have it, 21 years on Superior and 16th. Lived above that sucker, put all my money into my company, built websites, built marketing, expected everybody to come over and see my great art on my wall. Come on over, come on over. But I'm like, you know what, this doesn't work. I need to go out there and I can't expect the fish to come to my bait. I need to go to where the fish are. And so that's what I started doing every Friday and Saturday night. Getting in front of folks and handing out my business card. Did I want to throw up every single time I showed up? Yes. Was I sick to my stomach? Yes. But that was the only way things were going to happen. I had no other options. And things get really interesting when you have no other options. It has to happen. Art, I didn't pick art and creativity. It picked me. I just had to fulfill that calling. Okay? So my life was all about pain and once. I was able to do the cards from the Fast and the Furious. Then business partnerships grew, and they were able to go into, um, you know, did this logo and like in my studio quick in an afternoon with those guys. That was fun, but uh, I don't know. They'll speak for themselves. But it then just became where I started doing all these different collaborations with fun companies where they saw me out in the public, and then all of a sudden it became, hey, can you come and do this? All of this right here is a collaboration portfolio. That's all it is. So when I would work with a company, it was always – Let's do something that's never been done before. Let's do something that's out of the box, and let's provide value that was never expected. That's what I wanted to create with a company. So if I walk into a corporate office, I'm going to provide you something differently than anything you're going to get from any other agency or any other initiatives. And so that was my goal, was how can I, how can I provide something different that's never been done before? My relationship then grew. I remember at 20, uh, my relationship with companies changed. At 28 years old, crying my eyes out above Big Corona with a total... Basically, I'd call it a midlife crisis at 28. I started my business at 14. At 28, I was bawling, depressed, seriously done, like baked. And at 28, I said, I've been given the gift of creativity, the ability to paint. I have no idea where I'm supposed to take it or what I'm supposed to do with it. What the flip am I supposed to do? I was praying about it. Relationship with God is pretty much my main foundation and the major thread in my life. And that was all I had that night. And he just said, take your take your pages out of your journal and start doing paintings of those. I'm like, you gotta be kidding me, who's gonna buy that? So I went home to my studio, I, you know, it was a big room like this, and I just started painting these big six foot paintings of angels, and it looks a lot like that one right there. And I just started telling my testimony of what I was going through. Pur titles were like purging my soul, the invitation, opening myself up to receive the priceless gift of serenity. I just started purging my, my heart on these canvases. Long story short, a guy walked in, dropped 60 grand on all of them. I'm like, wait a minute, what happened right there? I just, I like shared my heart, had no idea what I was supposed to paint, what I was supposed to do. I'm 28, 
I want to have a life. I want to have a wife. I want to have some kids. I want a white picket fence. I want a normal life. How can I have stability and do what I love to do the most and still make really good money doing it while balancing a family? How do I put that all together? So then I started realizing, Noah, you've been given the gift of creativity and the opportunity to be able to paint anything. So don't think that you need to have a niche. Your niche is the ability to do many things. You're a portfolio life. And one of the things I want to encourage you to think about today is stop looking at your life as a person sitting in a boat with one fishing pole of career. Start looking at your life in portfolio. You need to build as many on-ramps to your life as possible so that people can get on the on-ramp to get onto your freeway, your main thoroughfare. Okay? And you're going to see what happened in my life after 28, and you're going to see how it expanded. And I want that to be an encouragement to you because we don't live in an age anymore where it's all about, here's me and my family, and here's me having one line in the water. I now have about 12 lines in the water. But they're not just meaningless lines in the water. They're specific, strategic, based on my strengths that create value and that create impact on the world. All right? It wasn't just about, hey, Noah's the art guy. It was more that Noah's an entrepreneur that happens to do some art. So that then spawned doing floral theories. Barbara Streisand has this piece. And with the idea of going to my grandmother's garden when I go over there for Sunday brunches and going, you know what? This really means a lot to me. And so I would do these paintings just to get them out of my system. And then they started to resonate. These are my mermaid paintings, wineries in France, and the one-off uh, pieces on uh, aluminum that are one-of-a-kind originals. Our licensing with Arturo Fuente Cigars of the Dominican Republic. And so this, I can now segue to what really started to juice my heart, and that was the kid in me. So the kid in me is now in Costco, and as my brand where I tell the stories of my life as a child, um, and basically the adventures we wanted to live. Uh, Stan Lee's uh, right-hand guy dreamt of being a car racer when he was a kid, and I unveiled this piece to him. He had a little bear named Chuckles, and his favorite number was 35. So I was creating what we always dreamt of being when we were kids and how we acted that out. Another guy wanted to be an astronaut, and so he would dress up in his bedroom and kind of had all these imaginations, um, dreams that he had. So this is my main wheelhouse. Now you've just heard my life as it pertains to art. This then grew on the radar, and I started forming relationships with Disney. Uh, so my Disney portfolio was able to blossom and flourish where I was in downtown Disney. This is uh, Wonderground Gallery in downtown Disney doing original paintings, taking the characters of what I used to do with my, my own work and would adapt it into the same style. I would then create collections, uh, Muppets, we did Tron, we did Villains. Recently we just formed a partnership with Lucasfilm Creative, or w with Lucasfilm, and so now with the new movie coming out for Star Wars, creating a bunch of new series for um, uh, limited edition art and posters and selling this on my site and doing Comic-Con and you know, that big old... Um, Routine every single year is a lot of fun to carry out with the art. So here's why I create. The reason why I create is because the connection with these collectors and people that when you start creating a tribe around your brand and around your life, regardless of whatever it is you're doing, you're doing life with folks. And the next thing that you know, 10 years from now, 15 years from now, you're going, wait, how many people are still in my life as a result of what I do for a living? And it's less about the product that I have, but it's about the experience that I create with them and, and, and literally the bonds that we create with our collectors and anybody that's in our life, whether it's a client or whether it's a group like this. So uh, the reason why I love doing these shows is, you know, signing and dedicating and meeting these folks, and you're talking people that, are, that have done 20 years of life with you. This then grew to the point where I was able to have my own collection in Costco and a full standalone collection, six images and limited edition prints selling online. And this is from a kid who didn't even go to art center in school and started going door to door painting at a coffee shop in Corona Del Mar. I just want to tell you guys, it can happen if you're willing to flip and put the work in it. But most importantly, what I'm going to tell you today, you cannot do it by yourself. The only reason why this happened is because I had mentors in my life and other creatives that stretched me, that found the blind spots in my life, and then gave me the strategies to be able to carry this out. What I'm talking to you about today, you will never learn in school. If I want to go to school, I treat school like a buffet or brunch, which I hate, by the way, because brunch always costs me 60 bucks. And I'm, an, I'm, a, I'm an eggs and bacon guy. So that's the most expensive eggs and bacon I'm going to get. And so education is kind of like that. Why am I paying for all this stuff I'm not going to use when I really need those two for my specific application? Okay? So if you're a millennial, if you're just starting out and you think you need to get educated, you know what you need to do is you need to get a mentor. And you need to get as many strategic mentors in your life. Rarely have I found any mentor in my life that's got finances, marriage, family, business, and faith compiled into one person. 
but I'm going to certainly try to find somebody who has it all together because I want to see them be able to live that, li that life balance. Okay? More stuff with Disney than Disney Online, working with collectors, and that's what I did for a living. That, that's, let's just call that art. Let's put that aside for a minute. This is what I'm most excited to talk to you about. That was my radar for success. If I could get to this point of a white picket fence, that's stability. I'll be able to create. I'll have money in the bank. Everything's going to be great. I'll be able to flourish and do what I do for a living with peace of mind. That's really what we want, right? Peace of mind. But what I want to talk to you about today is how to build a life of significance, not success. Everybody's on the hamster wheel, including I. I took the dangled carrot of, you know what? If you work really hard, you make a lot of money and provide for your family, your wife's going to love you, your kids are going to be happy, and the world and the planet's going to align, and you'll just be able to create without the preoccupation of money. Right? <laughs> Sound familiar? So here's Chantel and Griffin and Noah and Sophie, that's our dog, and um, just so you can kind of get a glimpse in the, back, in the background of our life. My son has uh, autism. He's on the spectrum. And uh, the Lord's brought that into our life as an amazing uh, teaching tool to us, and it's the biggest blessing we could ever have. And we have a newer dog since then. So, <laughs> well, in addition to, it's not like Sophie's gone. <laughs> She's not gone. Okay, sorry. <laughs> okay, here's here's get ready because we're gonna go pretty quick here. Where are you at on this timeline? We all have a life. We all have the same amount of time. I Meaning we all have a life here, right? So. You need to measure really, really quick. This is what I wish somebody would have told me when I was 20 years old. If I would have heard this talk right now, one half a degree, a mile before the, uh, the Titanic hit that, that iceberg, would have completely changed history forever. What if today in this message and this, this principle is what I'm about to teach you, allows you to trim your sails and trim your coordinates just enough to where it changes the entire trajectory of where you're going to end up. It's kind of like in golf. If I'm going to hit that ball right here, if I just move my club head, literally the slightest bit of degree, it'll be 150 yards difference down the fairway. That's what today in this kind of, this kind of uh, talk is about. Because I'm here. Decisions I started making were back in here. I was in 14 as I started to implement these, these decisions and strategies on my life with no education, just mentors in my life. Now, your earning years are going to stop here. So if you're 30, you, have, you basically have... Three chunks of 10, right? I've seen a lot of smiles. So this is like reality setting in a holy crap. <laughs> three, chunks of, three chunks of 10. How are you going to spend those 10? Because if it takes five to ramp something up, how can you ramp something up quicker? Meanwhile, if we sit in stagnation without doing, and in the art of doing, which is a technique that I teach, you literally sit standing while time grows bigger wings and time flies faster whether you like it or not. While you sit and dream and talk about all the great things that you would love to do, time flies faster. And what's worse, this is what you think your goal is. Okay? This is what my goal was. If I can get here, I'm good. I didn't necessarily want that. I want a Range Rover Defender. That's it. Okay? <laughs> <laughs> so I don't want the Lamborghini. But that was, that was what my takeaway was going to be. If I can just get here, then we're good. And then I'll leave a lot of money to my family, and then I'll, and I'll go into this thing called retirement. Well, what I realized is the book that I'm reading is in terms of truth and wisdom, the Bible, doesn't even have the word retirement in it. I'm here to work and produce. I'll kick it in eternity. Okay? This is the worst idea of retirement for me. I could think of nothing haunting more than this. I'll do this for a day, maybe two. Okay? But after that... I want to get moving again, okay? I want to be producing value. I'm not here just to kick it. Time off, I start to get a little antsy. But here's our destination. We're all going to end up here. So what I teach is one of the techniques is beginning with the end in mind, that you're going to look back on your life. How can I leave a life of significance, not just success? Am I really here for the bottom line and just the number? You're really going to find somebody sitting on their deathbed going, dang it, man, I wish I would have spent one more day at the office. Work is a part of what we do. I want to fit my work around my life, not my life around my work. And for most of the time, my life is getting the crumbs. I'm not living. I'm, just, I'm, I'm a human existing, not a human being. So those are some things that you really need to start to ask. So create more time to do what you want to do and less of what you have to do. Is today what you're about to do when you leave this place something you have to do or you get to do and you want to do? Okay? Learn how to find true balance between your life and your work. Make a living from doing something that you love to do. 
and learn how to use your life for significance, not just success. In order to do this, you're going to need a game plan. You're going to need a strategy. If you're not following somebody, you're following yourself. And that's where I was for a long time. I was convinced that if I just worked harder and if I just tried a couple more things, and artists are usually closed-chested. They're like, no, dude, I'm not going to give away my techniques. I'm not going to give away my strategies. I'm going to keep all this close to me because I need to make myself succeed. And if I kind of open up, then all of a sudden people are going to take my strategies. They're going to be vulnerable, hate on email and social media. Like all of a sudden this whole lid comes off and everybody's living in scarcity and in fear. I want to be able to get to a point where, this is when I did my signing for... Um, for Disney, I wanted to be able to get. I wanted to get to a point where I was literally being able to make money while I sleep. How could I build a pipeline and build a brand, me as a brand? Whether I did art or whether I write books now, so I'm writing books. I'm doing art. A big part of what I do is online mentoring. Um, we have a place here in Santa Ana where I'm able to do workshops on Saturday mornings and meetups and help creatives discover that sweet spot. And that's what fires me up. I had to realize I needed to be able to put assets to work for me. I did not want to be present in order to have to do it. Here's one way to measure. Is what you're doing with your time and your talent and the money, and the money that you're doing in your life right now, is it going to work for, me, for you where if you were at sleep or went on vacation for three months, you'd still have income from it? That's a question that you need to ask yourself. Otherwise, you will have to be present and you will always trade money for time. And the one thing that I want more of is time. And so if I want to get more time, I need to be able to buy certain situations and products and set up assets to go to work for me so I can be making revenue while I sleep. So for some folks, that's ebooks. For some folks, that's creating video content online. My buddies who started an online tutorial program with After Effects started out of their garage. Now they're doing multi millions off of something they did in their garage or they just put to work for themselves. They, and what was the difference? They did it. They didn't wait for permission. One thing I'm giving you today is permission. 100% permission, not just to dream, but more so the accountability to act. Nobody here is going to judge you by your words. I don't care how much you say how rad things are on social media. I'm going to see it by the fruit of your life. How much of what you're talking about is actually being lived out. And that's a conviction that I live with because if this is something that I'm going to preach and talk about, I need to be able to show this can happen. <laughs> and that's our accountability. One of the things that where life has now become for me, um, where it sits with me now, I'm almost done, I know it's 20 minutes. Um, where life sits with me now is this. Art is a part of what I do, it's not all of what I do. But it's a very important part. But even in the art and sitting down and trading time at an easel, my greatest time, my greatest time on this earth is standing at an easel making a painting, that I can then make into limited edition prints, posters, licensing, all the licensing that we're doing now. And those assets going to work for me on my online store and through strategic marketing. Then my blogging, writing my books, and mentoring. That's my wheelhouse. And one of the things that I love sitting down with individuals is first discovering your top five strengths. Taking those strengths, running every opportunity and decision that comes to your doorstep saying, I can strategically say no to this or yes to this. And if I say yes to this, here's why. So based on painting, blogging, writing, mentoring, and helping other entrepreneurs and businesses get to this spot, of the sweet spot, this then opened up two other areas in our life that became um, what came out of the other end of the pipe. Meaning, if I built a pipe, if you're a brand and your pipeline goes from Alaska to Mexico, and out the other end comes a product. The products that are coming through your pipeline, the value that you're creating for this world, whatever comes out the other end, you know what everybody does? They just wait for things to fall in their lap out of that pipeline and build a nice house and get the Lamborghini. What we're supposed to do is we're supposed to become distributors, not controllers. And so what everybody wants to do is grab all that money and the fruit of their labor and say, you know what, I'm just going to make this as cush as I possibly can until I die. So when I go to work, I had to ask myself that question. What am I going to do with the success if it happens? So money started to come in, and a lot of money started to come in. Well, what am I supposed to do with that? I'm supposed to distri distribute it. I'm not supposed to control it. And the moment, that I knew, the moment that God knew that I was a distributor, not a controller, all of a sudden things started to happen. We started an initiative with AIDS orphans in South Africa, building a, a home for uh, rescuing uh, AIDS orphans. 27 homes have been built so far with my partners that have done it. We're starting with our own, our own first home. Now I took that home and leveraged it through our brands. 
letting people in my universe, my online university, get, uh, get on board with that initiative if they like. They were looking for any sort of purpose and calling bigger than themselves. Then the idea was, how can we then leverage that and build community? So we've opened up a place in Santa Ana. My buddy and I, the head roaster for Kean Coffee, Sean and I, partnered together in collaboration, opened up a tasting room. You guys are invited every single Saturday from 8 to 11. Open house, talk shop, it's basically this community. Creatives and coffee is what it's called. And it's a place to break, excuse me, brainstorm, talk, strategize, and collaborate. Life for you guys is not to be done as a solo mission. I got such a passion for creatives in my local area here, I created the Reimagine Conference, which is November 12th through the 14th at the Doubletree Hotel. It's literally a room filled like this. And there's about 150 last year. I just like, I have to do this. I don't know how to do a conference, but I'm going to do one. <laughs> so I learned how to put on a conference. And the idea was just being intentional with creatives, helping creatives discover who they are, what they're supposed to do, and exactly how they're supposed to do it without wasting any other time on anything else. Why would you spend your precious time on anything that you're not great at? We, want, we don't want to do stuff that we're good at or well at. But when it comes to your calling, I would ask you to consider this. If somebody else can do what you're doing today, you're in the wrong spot. And the most important thing that you can do with, this, with your time is to really discover what it is you're supposed to do and how you're supposed to do it while you're here. Your calling is so unique to you that nobody else can fill your spot. So, can other people do art? Yes, I can, you know, they can do art like me. But they can't tell stories and they can't get out to the world the way that I can. Your voice is your story. Your past hurts. Your your, the places that you've failed. The abuse that you encountered. I mean, I've been through it all when I was a kid. And it's not, it's not, a, it's not a rosy picture. But you know what? That's been the greatest blessing. How can I leverage the traumas and everything that happened to me to become a solution for somebody else's problem? And you want the ticker? All you need to realize, this is what I wish somebody would have told me, your life is a solution for somebody's problem. You don't believe it. You might think you're too young. You don't think you want to open up. But literally, that is why you're here. So if you can take your talents, your strengths, your past hurts, align those together, that's your story. You take your story... You share that story with the world and not worry about what other people are going to think because what other people think of you is none of your business. Your job is to live true and authentic every single day. And what I mean by that, that's not self-help. That's, am I about to post this but won't because what they might think of me, what they might say. Am I living their life or am I living my life? So I'll ask you, I'll close with this. You can't pick your past, but you can paint your future. I would love anything I would love nothing more than, than you guys to leave here today with the idea that you can have a life of significance, not just success. It's not about the hamster wheel of money. It's about significance. And there's a big difference between the two. Your career is what you're paid to do, but your calling is what you're wired to do. Okay? And there's a big difference between the two. How can we discover our calling? Because that's going to have a much bigger ripple effect. In the end, your life won't be measured against others. You'll be, you'll be measured against the potential you possess and the influence you had on others. Nobody's going to say, hey, Noah, you know, when I stand before God at the end of my life, he's not going to say, Noah, how are you compared to Wyland? How are you compared to Kincaid? How are you compared to uh, Andy Warhol? How are you compared? That's not going to happen. He's just going to go, I wired you specifically. Your spiritual DNA is way more important than your physical DNA. And what that DNA is, is just for you and nobody else. Nobody else on earth in the entire time of this, this world had what you had. So that's who I'm going to compare it to, is yourself. And here's the big one, the influence you had on others. Never. I grew up with a pager. You guys have the power of the world <laughs> at your fingertips. And it's uh, alarming to me that people are just going, I'm rad, I'm cool, here's where I am, here's what's up, here's what's good, here's what's nice. Well, I'm like... Unfollow, one, follow, one, follow, one, follow, one, follow. Unless you are giving life to me, speak life into my life. Or at least give me the opportunity to have an on-ramp to get into your life. So this is what Noah U looks like. It's an online mentorship. Um, I started mentoring creatives to be able to help them get to this spot. I have you discover your brand, go online, how to do your blogging, how to do the right uh, storytelling, art of collaboration, um, the art of doing my calendaring, hacking time, and literally it's just all the principles of how I, I literally break down this entire format. Discovering your calling, who you are, what you're supposed to do, how you're supposed to do it in the least amount of time. 
Why? Because if I can, if I can have you do it in 30s, the amount of fruit that you're going to bear before, you, before your life ends is going to be much higher than my return. But I can just tell you this. You have the option. Now that you know today, this day, what's today? September 2nd. September 2nd is going to be an important day on your calendar. You'll never be able to forget it. Because it's the first day that you heard the reality of what's really going on with your time. And you'll never be able to say, I never knew. Because today you heard the truth that what I do matters, and I can't just be a, a ball in a pinball machine, just kind of bouncing around and seeing what happens. But at the end of my life, I want to look back and go, I had a life that measured, is measurable, and how can I measure, you know what the currency is? Not money, the currency is relationships. If you want to build a strategic brand, your currency is people. So I want to look at how many people can I influence? How many influencers can I get in front of? You are the biggest influencers at the epicenter of the world of creativity, Costa Mesa. I hate to say it, it's like not Paris for fashion and not this. I mean, Costa Mesa has always been it. So you have the ability to have that kind of leverage and power in your hand and influence influencers. You guys are sitting in the best spot, even location, geographically, sitting in a room with like-minded individuals. But I would say this, don't do life alone. Please come and have some free coffee at my coffee shop. Okay? <laughs> Hang out with Sean and I. Don't do life alone, no matter how depressed, no matter how overwhelmed, no matter how much writer's block you get. You are not alone. And if you don't want to talk to anybody, come talk to me. Because doing life alone sucks. I did it for 15 years alone as a creative. And that's why I created Noah U, because I was tired of being alone. So now we got hundreds of members in there from all over the world that are talking and taking risks and living life on purpose. I talked nine minutes too long. <laughs> We're going to take just a, a few questions, maybe. Okay, okay. Uh, I'll be fast. <laughs> I promise. If you need a bell, you can bell, but don't bail. Yeah. How did you find your mentors? I looked for people that had what I wanted. And even if that meant a total nerdy guy with a pocket protector. I'm like, dude, that guy's got peace of mind and he's strategic and he's not encumbered and entangled by his finances. How do I get to that point? Can I take you to lunch? I'll buy you dinner. And some of the ones that are really big celebrity type mentors, I'm like, hey, can I go pick your brain? And I realized, hey, this guy stinks as a father, terrible businessman, but his craft is, is insane. So I'll go juice off of him and milk him and shadow him for two hours in the studio. And that's how I hack this system. That's my education. If you want to learn something, go to school to learn something, just find people that are doing what you want to do and go and pay and buy their time. Shadow them. But I look for people that have what I want. And, sh and, and most... There's a difference between a coach and a mentor. I'm not a coach. I'm not a life coach. I'm a mentor. Coaches are for seasons. I'm here for your life. My mentors are in my life forever. I don't get rid of them. They can't get rid of me because I'm going to keep hunting them down. I buy their lunch. We meet every other week. So much happens in seven days that I need to have a constant replenishment and renewal with them. Okay? They'll detect your blind spots better than anybody. Any other questions? Yeah. What? What, what people are asking, because one of the things you said was, you know, everyone can be either a photographer, an artist, a designer, but then be the best, the, or do something that is going to really set you apart. How do you challenge your students or people that are asking you, well, either finding their voice or figuring out how to do something that, like, that's unique to you? Like yeah, like, I would give an example. There's a, how many photographers are in the room? Okay. How many, how, and you guys probably all do video and all that, too. But the cool thing is, nobody can tell. You gotta, guys got to remember, it's your heart. It's your past. It's your story. It's like, like, when you guys watch Top Chef and you watch these shows where everybody's cooking, right? I can get the same ingredients to all these people. It's how they interpret it and how they tell it. It's the same thing with your life. That's why I keep going back to you're not going to be compared to others. You're going to be compared to yourself. So if I really want to help somebody get somewhere, I'm going to help them get to the juice of their heart. What jacks them on the daily basis? And then what gets really amazing is you're so used to a life of chaos that the moment you start getting paid really, really good for something that is just air to you, it's like breathing, you're just going to yourself, there's no way I should be allowed to do this. <laughs> and you're like, I can't believe I, I just asked for $1,500 and they said yes off of something that took me an hour. And you're like, and it juices my heart and I'm able to give more and have an impact. You know, see what I'm saying? So that, that's what I do is really help folks discover. I don't care if there's many people in your field or your, or your craft. 
Let's specifically find out what your heart story wants to tell and how we're going to tell it in the, in the best strategic way that we're not wasting time. Here's the deal. Creatives don't have a playbook. That's really what it boils down to. You go to school, they'll teach you craft, but they don't teach you how to do life. And that's what I really want to see. Optimize you, your products, your talents, your stories, licensing, let's make you money, let's make you work the least amount possible and help your family out. Build the life that you want to do. Unless you want to find your complete identity in what you do for a living. Which I did for a long time and it sucks. <laughs> it does. I define who I am by what I do. Come on. So that would be my challenge to you guys, is, is really dig down on discovering why you're here, what you're supposed to do, and how you're supposed to do it. If you're not going to follow me, follow somebody else, get some mentors in your life, and get intentional with them. If you're not uncomfortable, you're not growing. And if you're not failing, you're not growing. Hope this helps. <laughs> Dr. Eager. Yeah, that's it. <laughs>